It, Nick Faldo, I heard him say this actually on a, on a TV telecast. He said he started to figure out how to play the game when he realized he had to swing the club in the direction he did not want the ball to go to. So think about that. Okay, we're talking about the most common, this, I wonder if this is the most common thing searched on YouTube, how to stop slicing your driver. And I get it out here all the time, and I've said it before in these videos, but I have a ton of people that come out for lessons who, they feel like they hit their clubs okay, but it's just the driver that's getting them trouble. So um, I wanna show you an example of a swing that works pretty well for a short, iron or shorter club that doesn't work well for a driver. So I'm going to grab a pitching wedge here. So we get people all the time who say they're okay with their pitching wedge, but it's their driver. So let's take a look. Let's take a swing here with this pitching wedge. So I, I hit behind that a little bit, which will happen for people, but it's straight. So if you look up at there at that flight scope monitor, it's straight. The ball went straight ahead, but if we take a look at what's going on here at these numbers, look on the right hand side of that screen. So see up here, um, it shows us that if you go down a little bit, the face to path, FTP, my club face was 11 degrees to the right or open to my path and my club path was going nine degrees to the left. So what that means is my club's going this way, but the face is pointing out well right of it. Now what happens is because we've got a club with a lot of loft on it, and I don't want to get into it too much, uh, we can get into it another time, but the more loft you have on a club, the less an open club face, a, a face that's open or closed relative to the path, the less it's going to affect the spin axis of the ball. Okay, So I want to show you something right here. I'm going to go move this to the spin axis number. We're going to look at the bottom of the screen on this. The spin axis is 5.5 degrees to the right, okay? So I'm gonna try to replicate that type of a shot. I'm gonna try to get the path going left. I don't think I'll be able to pull it off exactly where the path goes exactly left nine degrees and the face to the right 11, but we're gonna see what we can do. And let's just see what we get for curvature on this. Here we go. Well, that definitely sliced, but let's see what these numbers look like. Okay, so my face to path was 11 degrees to the right, 12 degrees to the right. My path was eight degrees to the left. So that was not that far off from that pitching wedge swing, right? But take a look at that spin axis there. The spin axis was 25 degrees to the right before it was, what, five degrees to the right maybe? So roughly the same swing produced a lot bigger, and, and the spin axis is the way the, the, the back swing of the ball works, right? So we got this big old cut type of a tilt because there's so much less loft on the driver and it put a huge slice on the ball. So that's the reason why you may feel really good with your irons, especially short irons, and your driver is just, is just a nightmare. All right, so if you're having trouble with your driver, it's probably your swing overall. We need to change your, the way your face is relative to the path and your swing path. All right, so let's talk about how we would do that. All right, so first off, let's talk about the club face. Um, We've got to first get our club face square to the path. So the first thing we want to do is take a look at our grip. We've done videos about this before. I'm not going to get into it too much, but if you look down at your top hand, just make sure that it's rotated on top a little bit and you can see two to three knuckles when you look down on that left hand. See the logo of my glove is pointing somewhere out here towards the camera. And then your trail hand, or for me, my right hand, my palm basically is matching up with, with the club face angle. Okay, then the next thing we just want to do is just try to get a sense of, and, and to maybe even take a look at yourself on, on video, are you bringing the club back by really 
moving your hands first. See how the club face opens up immediately. Um, all kinds of things are happening that aren't good here because we're losing the sense of having the club out in front of us. I shouldn't even say the sense. We're, we're losing just that fundamental idea of that club is gonna swing in front of our body. So make sure that as you take that club back, you're using your shoulders, you're not fanning it open with your hands. All right, so let's say we're doing pretty good on that. And let's say we're still experiencing that, that, uh, that slice. Uh, one little sign is that you're starting to get the club face working correctly, is you start to hit more dead pulls, not always slicing. Okay, so if that's happening, then this next thing might help out a lot. What's probably going on is we need to give you a sense of how to swing the club a little more from the inside of the target line instead of coming outside the target line this way. So here's, here's a nice way to do it. I'm gonna use my driver and I'm gonna make a swing with a lot less speed. And I'm gonna play the ball about the middle of my stance. And this is just a drill. This is not the way that I would say we wanna play. So when I set up and I put my hands down because my hands are really ahead of the ball, the club face wants to be open a little bit. At least it looks like it's open. But really, if I just continue moving forward, it's gonna get square. And that's because we're swinging the club on an arc. So the drill is, play the ball back in your stance a little bit. And I'm gonna embrace that when I hit this ball, the club is gonna be moving still out away from me a little bit as I hit it. The ball is going to start off to the right. So how about that? In order to quit slicing balls to the right, I want you to learn in this drill to push the ball off to the right. And that's because we're trying to get you used to that path coming this way instead of coming that way, over the top we wanna to say. So let's try that, let's see what we get here. So I'm gonna play it back a little bit and just let that thing get going out to the right a little bit. Colin, heads up. Colin's out there in front of me. So that ball started off to the right and it's cutting a little bit. Okay, but what I wanna see is I wanna see a, a swing path going out to the right now on my, on my flight scope. So my club path was 1.9 degrees to the right. So as I struck the ball, the club was moving on that circle out to the right away from me and that's what I want, okay? So we wanna hit a bunch of balls, small swings, okay? So like my club hit speed on that was probably a lot less. 90 miles an hour, you know, uh, so I took off a little bit. I normally swing over 100, right? So I took some speed off of it, but I'm just trying to get the feel of ball back in my stance and accepting getting used to that club hitting it more from the inside. Then I'm gonna pick up the speed a little bit, still back in my stance. This ball is gonna start to the right. Off to the right. It's moving, it's a range ball. I don't know if it's a wind or a bad ball or what. We'll ch check the numbers here. Club path, 2.9 to the right. So it's going out to the right. Face to path, 3.5 to right. So my face was a little bit open. My shot is a push slice. Okay, so now I'm gonna see if I can get that ball to draw. Start right and come back to the left. So how would that happen? So. I'd have it back in my stance, right? And I'm gonna to have to get that club face, you know, square to the path or a little close to the path even. So I'm gonna be a little bit more shut here. So let's see what happens here. So that felt a little more athletic. The ball looks fairly straight drawing. Let's see what we get. But we gotta see that path still going to the right. So club path, 4.5 to the right, that's good, right? And you can see my face to path, 3.4 to the left. So that's great, so that's a draw. So now I'm teaching myself how to swing the club from the inside. And I'm also getting a sense of what that club face feels like to be closing up as I get out to the ball. Now since the ball is teed up back in my stance, I'm also gonna check my angle of attack here. So it shows there under AOA on the right hand side, angle of attack, I'm hitting up about 2.6 degrees. And for me, that's probably a pretty good angle of attack at my club head speed. So now I'm gonna move the ball up in my stance a little. 
and try to get a sense and feel that club still swinging away from me a little bit and the club squaring up. Let's see what we get here. So the ball flight's pretty good. It, looked a, it actually looked like a little bit of a pull cut to me, but let's see. Looks good on the monitor, okay? So my swing path, 0.3 to the right, okay? Angle of attack was way up. I think I got a little behind that one. I think I flipped it a little bit. Uh, and my face to path was three to the left. So that's gonna be a pretty repeatable straight shot. I'm definitely not gonna be slicing them uncontrollably out of bounds. I'm not gonna be hooking them the other way either. So really what we're talking about doing is and this drill works for a lot of people, getting that ball in the middle of the stance so you can get a sense of that club swinging out away from you, back stays turned to the target, and then once you get a sense of that, then we wanna to learn to square that face up. And hopefully the grip is good, the takeaway is good to help you really get a handle on that. All right, so in, Nick Faldo, I heard him say this actually on a, on a TV telecast, he said he started to figure out how to play the game when he realized he had to swing the club in the direction he did not want the ball to go to. So think about that, all right? Try that drill. It helps a lot of people here at our golf school. I hope that helps. We'll see you next time.